So here's a new one that's been getting a little bit of hype lately by Prada. This one is Luna Rosa Ocean, but the Eau de Parfum. This is the one that just came out in 2023. Of course, I have the Eau de Toilette. I believe I've done a video on it as well. So here we have a darker version with vanilla and grapefruit and incense and some woodsy notes and also a synthetic ingredient called Amber Extreme. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this brand new release. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on the brand new Prada Luna Rosa Ocean, the Eau de Parfum, a 2023 release, I do want to start the video off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. It's free and it would mean so much to me. Make sure to hit that bell icon and click where it says enable all notifications because I do upload on a daily basis. I wouldn't want you to miss any of my daily uploads. And of course, give this video a thumbs up by the end of the video if you enjoyed it or if you took something of value from today's episode it would really mean a lot to me i appreciate it so much so of course i do have the original prada luna rosa of course i have a lot of the other flankers and i've reviewed so many throughout the years and there's carbon and there's so many other wonderful flankers that have been put out and some of them i really enjoyed some of them i gave a lukewarm response to well i actually purchased this one recently from my local macy's and this one really blew me away in terms of the note breakdown i'm thinking of frankenstein scents and, and vanilla and some of these darker ingredients and I'm thinking to myself, uh oh, this one is going to take things in a much darker direction. This is not going to smell similar to the Eau de Toilette and it doesn't, right? It's gotten compared to fragrances like This Is Him by Zadig and Voltaire. I saw that when I was looking at an online fragrance forum. I actually would compare it to some other fragrances that I have a really sentimental relationship with in my collection. But in any case, I'm going to talk to you about all the comparisons and all that stuff in just a bit. Let's go ahead and start things off with a quick look at the presentation. Now, right in the opening of this fragrance, the first ingredient that I thought I was getting was iris. Iris or orris root. And interestingly enough, I went online, I didn't see it in the note breakdown, and it's one of those ingredients that starts to dissipate, and you know, I suppose it's something happening in the opening, and I thought to myself, oh man, I'm getting iris, and you know, initially it was reminding me of Dior Homme Intense, or even one of the Givenchy Gentleman fragrances that have orris root or iris in them, and I said, wow, this is really, really nice. Of course, iris is a floral ingredient that kind of smells like lipstick or a cosmetic bag. It's actually quite waxy or buttery in terms of its smell but of course this is something that goes away rather quickly I think it, it is evident for like the first 20 25 minutes or something like that but this fragrance is very warm and ambery and of course there is a synthetic molecule in here called amber extreme and it does give off a very warm sensual kind of mysterious vibe to it so the original Prada Luna Rosa Ocean the Eau de Toilette it's very fresh and invigorating and more of like a casual fragrance this is more of like a date night mysterious night out on the town type of a fragrance. So that would be the main difference between the two. Of course, in the opening, you have the grapefruit and it's very short lived. I would say this is not much of a citrus fragrance. As a matter of fact, this tends to go in a much darker, more sensual and mysterious direction, right? So if you're looking for something that is a little darker, better for nighttime, if you're going to the club or if you're going out on a date and you don't want to smell average, for lack of a better word, I think this is a fantastic selection and I'm very satisfied with my purchase. Of course, this was over 100 bucks but I'm very satisfied with my purchase I did pay full retail for it of course it just came out there are no alternatives at the moment but let's touch upon some of the other notes that were in the note breakdown including the frankincense now frankincense or olibanum for me has a lemony pine aroma and this doesn't smell lemony and it doesn't smell like pine resin too much but I do get some of the vanilla with maybe a touch of like a dark ingredient and there's something balsamic maybe something similar to like a benzoin or something exotic but if I'm being honest with you this fragrance does at times smell like this is him by Zadig and Voltaire which is also kind of like a sweet resinous incense fragrance so I can understand why people are making that comparison and I've gone through several bottles of that fragrance as well purchased all of them thankfully not at full retail but here we have a fragrance that is very deep and warm and sensual 
floral and incense-y with a little bit of freshness in the opening, very, very short-lived. And I think the reason why I enjoyed this one so much, especially in the opening, is because of that pseudo iris vibe that I got from it that immediately put me in the mindset of fragrances like Dior Homme Intense or one of the Givenchy Gelman fragrances that, you know, like the Reserve Privé and some of those are really nice, very warm, very sensual. I think this is going to be a hit. It's not a freshie. I don't think it's for everybody. I think that if you have fragrances like this in your collection, this one might be redundant, but my top recommendation to you would be scent is subjective. Go to the mall, try it like I did. If you really enjoy it, commit to purchasing it and you know, make that investment. If you're not crazy about it, move on to the next offering. But I've always enjoyed Prada fragrances, especially because a lot of them do have iris. And the way that the iris has been used in a lot of other fragrances like Infusion, Cedra or even Prada Lum has never given off that waxy lipstick type of a vibe like Dior Om or Dior Om Intense. This one kind of does in the opening. So I like how they kind of stay true to that Prada signature, if you will, but doing it in a way that is probably a bit more modern and innovative, for lack of a better word. Try it for yourself. I hope you like it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, let me say this. I don't think it's the most unique fragrance. I think this is a DNA that I've explored with some other fragrances before. It takes a lot for a fragrance to be truly innovative, especially in today's landscape. We have thousands of fragrances out there and so many being churned out, you know, month after month after month that it is kind of hard to retain that originality. But I do think that this fragrance has an amazing smell and it's right up my wheelhouse. This is the type of DNA that I really enjoy. Again, try it for yourself. Longevity was about eight hours on skin, which is great. That's above average, especially given the concentration. In terms of the projection, it projected very well for the first 45 minutes, but within an arm's length, it became an elbows length scent right around hour five and a half, a skin scent right around hour eight or nine. In terms of the versatility, I think this one is great for the colder weather. So of course you can wear it on a summer night, especially if it's a little chilly and there's a nice breeze, but I think this one would work really well for the spring fall and winter. I think this one is a bit masculine leaning from a traditional vantage point that is. I think this one is great for formal scenarios and I think this will cater to any demographic in terms of age range. I think somebody who's a little bit on the younger side would really enjoy this one on account of that subtle sweetness that is in here with the vanilla and everything but I think it also has some darker elements to it like the incense and the amber extreme that would cater to the scents and sensibilities of somebody who's a little older as well. In terms of the presentation of course I think it's a really nice presentation. I think the bottom is a little bit darker than the Eau de Toilette. I haven't done a side by side, but I know I own the Eau de Toilette. My final verdict on this fragrance is I think it's amazing. I think it's one of the best releases for 2023. Some of the other fragrances that I purchased have been a little redundant and reductive. And so it's nice to have something that I feel like, wow, I'm actually gonna wear this one. <laughs> and I didn't just waste my money. In any case, that was my review of the brand new Prada Luna Rosa Ocean Eau de Parfum. If you own or have tried this fragrance or the Eau de Toilette counterpart. Let me know what you think. Leave your comment down below. I always love the interaction. I try to respond to as many comments as possible. Also, if you took something of value from today's review, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.